Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about some tips on getting started with SDL. Now we've already gone through the setup, so now I wanna give you a few resources as we get into the programming stages here of actually using SDL so you know where you can get some more help beyond these videos. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here at the SDL homepage. And I'm gonna go ahead and take you to the wiki first and foremost, because that is sort of the best resource here, one of the best resources here. Now, again, how I like to use this is I like to look at these three uh, API documentation links here, which I'll zoom in on here, the API category. And usually as you get acquainted with SDL, you'll have some ideas about where you wanna start looking. For instance, in video, we're gonna start with some 2D accelerated rendering stuff. And usually there's a little bit of a introduction here just to get you in the mindset of what these commands are doing, what their intent is, and then a bunch of related functions that you can search through. So again, very handy to take a look at here. Uh, and sometimes there will also be notes and GitHub issues that you can also look at for more insight. Now, the other important links there from that front page here, the quick reference might also be helpful to just keep open and available here for commands that you're going to use frequently and are sort of under, uh, well, like initialization here. And again, this is just a text-based page here, so I can search for something like SDL, create, render. And a lot of this is just really helpful too if you're looking through code or seeing me write code and you forget something, maybe in a later video, you can just quickly see that here's the function, the parameters, the return type. And if I scroll over, uh, I'm zoomed in, so this is gonna be far to the right here, uh, but you'll get sort of the one word or one sentence rather synopsis of what that command is doing. Again, just as a quick reminder, or if you see something or are reading somebody else's code, then you'll have an idea of what's going on here. So that's a really nice link as well. And then I also like using the complete API reference. You're gonna see me doing this uh, frequently where I basically just have everything on one page here. Uh, I really like documentation like this because I could just do, again, a giant uh, control uh, F or rather control F through this giant list here and look for something like SDL create render and find the actual function that I'm looking at here. Okay. Uh, and this particular, by going through the link um, in this way, I will have just all of the SDL three commands. Um, you'll also see me sometimes just out of habit from the front page uh, or rather the wiki page. Let's go here. Uh, sometimes I'll go to the index. Uh, and that has all the SDL2 stuff. So if you don't want to, you know, filter through SDL create render and see the version two and version three um, on the same page for whatever reason, that's again why I prefer uh, just going through this link here because it's got everything. I mean, it's literally got everything, but it's the SDL3 links here. Okay. Uh, and of course, if you ever get confused, you could just change the, uh, you know, two to three here. Uh, if for whatever reason you're following this playlist on an older version of SDL, but we're gonna focus on SDL3 in this list. Now, a few other things that are useful. Recently, I was traveling, so that meant downloading the offline HTML uh, of these wiki pages was very, very useful. Again, I just generally recommend this anyways, uh, because it's faster to browse the documentation, so I recommend doing that uh, so that you have, well, command or documentation wherever you go. Now, the other thing that might also be useful if you built SDL from source to other tips here in my SDL folder here uh, from the GitHub repo. So again, you could just go to the Git repo uh, in this way, and I'll show you a few uh, useful things here. And we want to go to SDL3 most likely. Eventually, you might want to go to SDL3's TTF or image library or these types of things. But um, again, this is the uh, documentation here, so you can download there. Um, but the other thing on the GitHub repo is, again, just to go into the source folder here. And occasionally it is very, very useful to actually go into the source and see how things work here. So downloading and having a copy of the source code so I can grep through and do something like SDL pull event and try to figure out where it is defined here. Now there'll be a lot of tests, which I generally don't care about, but the uh, source is probably what I care about. Uh, and finding the declaration uh, here by just, again, grepping can be super useful. So let's go ahead into that uh, file here. And I'm going to type in that same function here, searching in the bottom left of my screen. So SDL pull event. And we can actually see what's going on in the implementation. Okay, so this is calling some other function here. Uh, and then if you're using Vim, let's highlight over it and just do star and find the other invocations until I finally find 
you know, what the actual function's doing for SDL poll event. And he can read through and sort of understand everything that's going on. The, the source code is pretty well documented. Um, and importantly, if you're developing for other platforms, you can see how it might be different on other platforms. So this is occasionally useful just to understand exactly how things are working to go into the source code. So I just wanted to point that out as another option uh, that you can do. So if someone asks you, how does it actually work? You'll be comfortable with diving into this library because it's open source. Now, if you built SDL3 from source, uh, as in some of my... Uh, instructions if you follow the previous lessons you can actually use the manual uh, pages here uh, or the man pages for short and you can search for uh, dash k is sort of search for something and then sdl underscore since all of our functions start with that uh, and you can actually search for these functions in this manner here so uh, and again since i have sdl3 uh, installed let's just go ahead and look at the manual page for one of these here sdl uh, here vulcan uh, create surface here. Okay, let's see what that does. And again, just to verify it's SDL3 function, you'll see the include there, the function, and then a lot of this documentation. Again, this is super useful if you're either integrating these tools into something like Vim and want to be able to look at the manual page there, or if you're in an offline setting, or again, just using these pages and being able to search them is super useful. Okay, let's see if there's an example here. Uh, example, maybe no example on this page here. Uh, but anyways, you can use all of your search paid uh, tools to search through the help here. So again, these are a few different tips that I hope you'll find helpful for otherwise just searching through the documentation of SDL3 and helping you get started. As always, the other resources available on this uh, videos that you're watching here that I'm producing, you go to courses.mshed.io. If you scroll down, I have all my SDL3 videos that are gonna go in this free playlist, the same one that you're watching, so feel free to check those out. All right, folks, so thank you again for your time and attention. We'll get into programming now, but those are a few tips to otherwise help you navigate SDL3. Enjoy.